In this Men 16 video, you're going to learn how to send pressure from a zone look. Guys, welcome to today's video, and today we're going to be discussing, again, our five sets for success series. This is going to show you how kind of the scheme of the week, the outline, the kind of what you can expect on a weekly basis, and this really gets at the heart of the five sets for success. What we're talking about today is we're talking about we're in this nickel two four five double A gap and we're talking about this from this, the concept or the thought process of having a pressure, um, having a play that's going to send pressure out of a zone look. This is going to be able to to give you a, a blitz with, with a zone coverage behind it uh, is really the key to this. So what we want to do is we go to the nickel two four five double A gap, and remember that we uh, yesterday. Oh, by the way, yesterday we talked about kind of the overarching picture of the five sets for success, all of the sets that you need, why you need those sets. Also, we talked about the base set, the base play that we want to come out in, um, and the base play that we want to use to kind of slow down the run and also be decent against the passing uh, offenses. Today we're going to be showing you a blitz from the nickel 245 double A gap. It's going to show you how to get pressure from a zone look. Uh, and then we'll also come back later on in, in the week and show you the rest of this scheme. Nickel overload three. Remember from yesterday that our base look is to base align and show blitz. This is important because every single look from our defense, it needs to look the same every single time. Every play we run, it needs to look the same. The other thing that we want to do, and sometimes this year, for some reason, the linebackers are doing kind of finicky things. Um, but what we want to do as well is remember we moved Chancellor out here just a little bit off the slot so that it, we get to create a, a nice uniform look from both sides of the field. Now, in order to set this pressure up, normally, you know, you just want to work with your pressures and kind of see what works and what doesn't work. What I like to do is I like to just run it as is and see if I get pressure. As you see, I do get pressure, but let's see if we can make it a little bit better. So one thing I like to do is when I, you know, when I, the, the first thing and for, first thing I note this year is is typically with pressure this year. This just comes with experience. But one of the things that you can do is you can crash your defensive line in. Crashing your defensive line in is kind of the blueprint for blitzing this year. And what you'll see here is uh, it actually gets us picked up. We're not able to get pressure in. Okay, so that's something interesting that we need to understand, and we need to acknowledge, and uh, we need to work with. So as we work with more with this play, what you'll see here. With this middle linebacker in the A gap, it really kind of changes how everything is going to work. And so another thing we can do with this is crash our defensive line to the right side of the screen, and we'll see how that works. And there you see we get some nice gap heat off that left side. Practice mode is a little finicky this year, so you need to make sure that it works two or three times consecutively. So we're going to run it a couple more times here for you. Remember, we want to keep in the integrity with the play. We like to use our Earl Thomas, and so wherever he goes, we know that's our responsibility. And here you see there's that pressure, and see that time we got picked up. So that's just something we need to understand. We need to really look into it more and kind of develop the heat. Uh, and you'll see as we go through this, um, we will ultimately be developing some heat here. But what I want to do is I really want to look at the process of doing that. One other thing I like to do is, you know, these linebackers are really kind of finicky and where their placement is is really important. Um, so, one other thing we want to try to maybe do is hot blitz our left outside linebacker. This may create a little better angles and may allow us to get better pressure. Here you see it's going to get us some nice gap pressure again, and let's see if this works. Like I said, normally if it works two or three times, um, for me this year, normally it's it's not too bad. Um, but normally it's, you know, that first time it'll work, and then that after that, you know, you really need to make sure it works again. So here we'll should check it again. Here you see we get picked up again. And so again, that's kind of you see that this is kind of part of how um, developing a blitzing scheme it, it works. How to lab, how to really kind of get at the at the, the the really thought process of what it takes to really develop a defense. And that's what I'm trying to show you here. Um, I came in the, into this. You know, I have a final setup, but I want to try to teach you how to get to it. Uh, so here, once again, we crashed line right, and we pinched our linebackers now uh, to try to make sure that that linebacker on the right side always comes in uh, from a baseline look so that we get that same look. Um, and we see we're still having some issues with the pressure. One other thing I want to try here is contain rush. It gives you a different blitz angle on that outside. Um, so we can maybe try that. And you see we snap go, and there you see we get some pressure coming in. Pretty pretty clean, pretty clean look there. Um, one other thing we may try is to spread our line, but let's see if this contain pressure will work again. And a reminder that we need to pinch our linebackers to kind of bring that, make sure that right of screen linebacker comes in. And then we also always need to take the chancellor and kind of pull him off that edge. 
Here you see we try it a second time and we get picked up. So uh, now I want to try a couple of things different, uh, some some line crashes and things like that. So baseline, show blitz, pinch your linebackers, and now what we're going to do is we're going to try to um, what I what I find beneficial this year is to pinch my defensive line. Um, and see if they pinch in a little bit. Sometimes it changes uh, the outcome. And so let's see here. We'll bring those guys in a little bit. And now uh, we're kind of trying to crash the middle, try to get a double team. And it uh, looks like we got some good pressure there, maybe something to work with. So we'll continue to look at it and see what we can get. And this is how it goes. I mean, this is how labbing goes. This is how it works. Uh, we crash them down. Now we're going to try crashing them to the right. And it's really, it's a lot of experiments. It's a lot of moving people around and changing your angles. Here you see we get really solid pressure, in my opinion, from this gap. We got some gap pressure as well as that edge pressure. And so now we really got something to work with. So what we're seeing here is we crash the line to the right. We pinch them in. If we bring the safety down in the box like we normally do, again, we like to take a chance to pull him out here and then go. And what you're going to see here is we got that same pressure, but that time it didn't work a second time, and so that's important to know. Now, a couple things is we like to combine what we've done. So one of the things we noticed was that the contain blitz really worked well, uh, and so we're going to now combine that with the pinch and crash line to the right. So we contain blitz to get that outside angle, and then we also crash the line to the right to get that little slip angle from the defensive end, and now you see that we're going to get some nice clean pressure on the outside. Let's see if we can get that to work one more time, and hopefully, you know, this is kind of going to secure this. This has been a full lab video. I mean, it's really kind of showing you the heart of labbing, and I really hope you're finding some value in what you see here. But uh, here it is once again, and there you see we get picked up once again. So some really frustrating things, um, but it is what it is, and, you know, we need to continue to work. We need to continue to work through uh, what we're working on, okay? So try it again. May have been a fluke. Let's see if this works. There you see we do get that edge pressure, but it was kind of finicky. wasn't really clean, so, you know, I'm a perfectionist, and I like to really make my blitzes as clean as possible. The hard part, and I really think that this is really kind of the hard part of this, is that this angle from the linebacker is really kind of messing everything up. If he was on a little more of a pinched angle, um, it may be a little more effective. Let's try it again, though. And here you see, there it is. And we're starting to get really clean pressure off that left edge um, by pinching our linebackers. And that was something that we were, you know, obviously doing in the beginning. Let's try to globally re-blitz our linebacker just to kind of see what the look does that at that point. Here it really changes the look for the worse. Uh, as you see, we get picked up there. And so, same setup. Same, everything's the same. We're just not going to re-blitz this time. We're going to quarterback contain rush. Bring Thomas down because he's our user player. We forgot to bring Chancellor on the outside to fake blitz him. And we go. And you see we now have that nice edge pressure, but unfortunately he's on a contain rush. And so he may slow up there for some reason. Let's try this again. It may have been a fluke, so we obviously need to try it again. And let's see here. This time we're going to try to leave our line spread it out and see if that makes a difference. Sometimes it does. Here it actually worsens the play. So we note that. Like I said, and we just try this. We try it over and over again. We move guys around and experiment. What I don't like to do is manually move guys. I really don't like that, but um, I might have to with this formation to get the pressure to work. So here I'm going to, you know, I bring Chancellor out here. You know, I what you may want to do here and you may want to move lane in a couple steps to get a little more secure of an angle and here it doesn't work and so we'll go back to again and you just keep practicing keep working with it one other uh, you know one other tactic you might want to do is go into instant replay if you turn the camera around you can look at the offensive lineman zoom in on them kinda of look at what they look at post snap if we zoom in what you're gonna see is this left tackle you kinda of see who they're guarding who they're gonna jump to and so you see that this this, you know, the, the, they're looking kind of at that backer. The backer blitz is here. And so really what you're going to have opportunity to do is is get your um, blitz in from this, this edge. Um, what's happening is this guard is passing guys off. So what we need to have happen is the center. You see that the center is blocking two people, and that's really what's slowing up the play. So we'll get back in and, and check this out here. 
So one thing we may need to do is spread our line. We'll try spreading our line this time. And um, to try to kind of give a little wider of an angle. For some reason, Urban stays out there sometimes. So we spread our line and crash them down. And now you see we got consistency from that nickel 245 double A gap. So there's pressure, there's one set. Let's see if we can get it to work twice. Snap go. And you see we get picked up a second time. Okay? So just kind of keep working with it and keep tinkering. So we've tried a bunch of things here. Uh, and, and one of the other things that we've noted is that maybe we need to change. His blitz angle is going to change if we move him. So if we move him in, you see his blitz angle changes just a hair. So let's see an experiment. Let's see what that does. You see it doesn't do a whole lot for the... Uh, uh, excuse me, for... Uh, you see that, again, it doesn't work properly. Um, I don't know why I called timeout. I need to... Let me see here. Nickel two four five double A gap, and the play is nickel overload three, and we were in the. I don't know why a re quick pitch was a recent play from here. We were in the gun. We were in the gun spread. And we were using the play Y stick. So baseline show blitz. Pinch linebackers. So now one thing I may try here is to leave them on their stock angles and spread them out. This may help a little bit. And we'll see what we get. And you see we get some pressure that time. Kind of sloppy, but we did get some in. So let's look at that, review it, see if it works again, see if it works a second time. We're spreading our line. We're going to leave them on their stock angles. Thomas down. Snap go. And you see we got that nice pressure uh, at the quarterback. So we've got two consecutive pressures, very similarly done. One of the things I also want to try to, to look at here, sorry for the notifications going off, but uh, one of the things I also want to look at maybe is the possibility of a contain rush. It's always good to weigh your possibilities and try to see um, how many you know options you can have from this. And, and, and really the goal is to kind of see the best pressure possible from this formation. So we'll try contain rush just for fun. And we see the contain rush does get picked up. Okay, so that's interesting to note that the contain rush has difficulty getting in. And um, let's see what we've got here. But again, so now we'll show you spreading the line. You see that this has been successful a couple times. Now what I want to do is move Lane in to change his blitz angle a little bit. You'll see it'll change a little bit. And now we'll see what happens. And we see we get some gap pressure from the defensive end. Now this is an interesting concept because maybe if we were to slip him a little bit, it's going to change it. Um, it's going to change his angle, make it him a little and a little bit faster. So we're going to crash our line down now to get a, a sharper angle from Averill. We're going to bring the lane in so that his angle changes a little bit. Like I said, we already spread the line because that seems to be the kind of the pattern for this. And we go. And we get picked up, okay? And so we note that we get picked up, so we know that that is no longer an option. You know, if we get picked up, don't really want to mess with that anymore. So something that did work, though, was spreading the line, pinching lane in a little bit um, so that his angle was straight down, pinching the linebackers, of course, to bring them in, and then obviously moving Chancellor out here like that to create our base look. Snap go. You see we got some gap heat. So this is, seems to kind of be the, the principle. Now the next thing you want to experiment with when you're talking blitzes is can you um, take anybody out of the blitz, okay? So can I can I remove players that are already blitzing? So the first thing that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take the far right of screen defensive end and place him on a zone. Typically I'll place him on a flat zone. I think it's the best zone to put him on. And now we'll see if we get pressure. We see that we still get some pressure, but we got kind of picked up right at the last second. Um, so that's not something that I really like to see um, from the defense. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try spying this defensive end, Bennett. Spy him. Bring Chancellor out, of course. Bring Thomas down. I like to get him right down in there uh, to really get a look, a nice aggressive look here. And snap go. 
and you're going to see we're still getting kind of picked up there so without that blitzing guy we kind of get picked up so then we'll also try the other blitzer we'll try the linebacker oh excuse me no the ne and then the the next thing we'll try to do is bluff blitz him we'll try to fake blitz him to to see if if maybe you know that's enough that he'll hold him long enough to uh for it to work move chancellor out so fake bluff blitzing the defensive end and you see this, the the play still has some some trouble coming in Okay, so we know now that we cannot zone out him, so now we'll try the other guy. And this is all revolving around trying to make this the best play as possible. So now we'll take Coil, we'll place him on a bluff blitz and see what he does. Bluff blitzes, and you see we still get picked up, and the ball is able to be delivered. So we now know that we cannot zone anybody out. We need the five straight blitzers. So we, so we come down, we set our play up have our five blitzers and um, we should be able to get that pressure and here you see the pressure screaming in off that left edge so that is kind of the thought process behind developing a blitzing defense um, and then this is obviously the zone blitz uh, it's a blitz from a zone format tomorrow we're going to show you another set for success or excuse me another play for success out of this 245 double a gap the whole concept behind the zone blitz is that you're going to be mixing in your zone coverage defense that we're going to discuss later in the week and it's going to allow you to really confuse your opponent when they start passing the football so that is our zone blitz out of the five sets for success Today you learned a ton of stuff about defensive labbing. I would I would really encourage you to watch this video again as you see the kind of the the evolution of the play develop into something that is really effective uh, for long term.